Uh, so let's talk about Harry Hamlin on Better Call Saul. Sure. So did you audition? I did. I'm going to tell you too. First, it's Howard Hamlin. Oh, I'm sorry. But that's all right because Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould love L.A. Law and love Harry Hamlin. Oh, and it's a tip of the hat to them. Yeah. Which then, and only, right. only in Hollywood, kids, I find myself at... Well, this is the truth. I find myself at a party at the Chateau Marmont, and um, and I look across the room, and Harry Hamlin and Lisa uh, Renna are there, and I thought, well, that's Harry Ham. For me, that's you know the the, the Greek God movie, you know, right. uh, from '75, and he was married to Ursula Andress. Yeah. I mean, that's Harry Hamlin. <laughs> that's right. So I go over timidly, like, "Hi, excuse me," and he turns to me, and he goes, "Oh, I love your show." I love your show. I can't believe they didn't name him after me. And I'm like, well, you know, they did. And I got to talk with him about that. Aww. So it was kismet. Um, Lisa, Renna, and my wife, Mandy, um, immediately were like, oh, look at these two boys. <laughs> Our cameras were out taking selfies. We were just like. The Hamlin boys. Oh, my God. We were so gross. <laughs> oh, that's so, gross. so cute. That's so cute. Um, going back to uh, how I got the job. Um, uh, the, the long and the short of it is I showed up and I auditioned. The reason being, though, is. Um, I'd never seen Breaking Bad. Oh my God! I had not seen Breaking Bad. Well, I'm sorry. We saw the pilot. My wife was eight months pregnant, I think, with our first child, and we watched the pilot of Breaking Bad. And uh, she turned to me on the couch afterwards, and she said, "Yeah, I'm not on board with this." Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't watch that. We had a baby, um, and then we had a second baby, and we just—I mean, it's really incredible. We managed to miss it. I never went back to it. I saw all the billboards. I mm -hmm. heard about the buzz. Never saw a single episode. I can talk extensively about My Little Pony and Clifford the Big Red Dog. Um, <laughs> Blues Clues. Yeah, so I find myself uh, on the, uh, as we say, uh, the other side of 50, and uh, I'm married now with two kids, and I've got a mortgage, and I'm staring at the ceiling, and I'm going, oh, this is what they were talking about. Um, the phone's not ringing, and there's not a lot of work. I guess it really is a, a young industry, and I'm starting to question what's going on. And It's a slow time anyways. Whatever. And I'm just like, wow. Okay. Okay. So what was it, literally? Was it like two weeks without an audition, a month? Uh, like maybe three weeks. Okay. But three weeks in January, yeah. after you've gone through the Christmas, when yeah, there's no yeah, work. Yeah. Like if you don't get a job by Thanksgiving, yeah, you're probably you're not like, working from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Right. And it doesn't kick back up until mid-January. So now you're talking about a good two months yeah. no, I, to, I've to been, really, that's, that's a, really get ooh, into your head yes. and feel bad yeah. and wonder what's going on. <laughs> and then go online to find out who else is working right. so you can feel oh, equally yeah, that, bad. That will sure. really help support the... Theory. But I get a call. My, they call me up, and I've got an audition for a dog with a blog that was on ABC Family. I read um, for that. My so friends were actually uh, the parents on that. I know them. Um, dog with a blog and ABC Family, and I'm staring at the ceiling, and I'm going, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And they're, they're happily calling me with the audition. Right. Why not? It's an audition. It pays American money and everything. And I was like, oh, my God, has it become this? Dog, dog with, with a blog. blog. And ABC, I mean, the dog is number one on the call sheet in the show. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> So I go through a whole rigmarole of like, oh my God, this is the best they can do for me. No, this is the best you can do for yourself. Blah, 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 blah. I get over myself. I put on my acting suit and I drive down and, um, and I walk in and, and this is, there's literally 20 of me. Two of them have Emmys. And my blood gets cold and my collar gets hot. And I go, oh. This is, this is real. This is what this is. Yeah. Welcome to the business. Yep. I guess I guess you should have been Matthew Perry instead. You missed that chance. We all wanted to be Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> the job was taken, it turns out. Yes, apparently. So He's... I go in, so I go into that and I'm like, oh wow. And um you know, it was uh, basically three pages of a monologue of a character and whatnot. I'm the first one in. It's thin walls. I walk in, and the two producers who are there are just, they're just younger, and they've like backwards hats, and they've got this, and one's eating, and it's just, it happens, it happens. And, right. And I walk in, and I'm dressed in a suit, and I stick my hand out. I'm the schmuck who brought a, an 8 by 10 I brought, it's a picture that you used to bring when you went to auditions. And, um, and I stick my hand out to shake their oh. hands, and they look up at me like, oh, oh. Wipes his hand. Oh, oh that's my interesting. God. Wow. So yeah. I do that, and then I turn to. I want to say her name is uh, not Nina Goldberg. No, it's uh, Carol Goldwasser. Carol Goldwasser. Yeah. Carol Goldwasser is dressed. Uh, she. It looks like morning. She's got this beautiful sort of frilly black thing, but she's dressed, and I have this uh, this image like she's out of the forties, but she's like made. She's made up. <laughs> she came to work yes. to cast, and I was like, God bless you. Well, I'm in a suit, and there you are. And she turns to me, and she goes, Thank you for coming in. 
And I said, great, absolutely. And I reminded myself, I'm here because Carol Goldwasser is a casting director, and I'm here to show her that I know how to act. And she turns to me, and she goes, okay. She goes, <laughs> she goes when you're talking to the camera, you'll be talking to this. And she points to the camera, in case I wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> And then she says, and I swear to God, that, and then she turns and oh she goes, God. and when you're talking to the dog, you'll be talking to me. <laughs> and at that moment, I felt bad for her. Right. I felt bad for me. That she needed to explain. And we all stood there, and I just thought, here we are. And at that moment, and I've never thought this, at that moment, I thought, I can leave. <laughs> it, will be, it will be embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I'll have to call my agents to apologize. I'll have to send something to Carol at some point. But <laughs> this, is, this is awful. And then I thought, in the next thing, since I'm like, you put your acting suit on, you memorized your lines, you drove all the way down here. Show Carol you know what to do. Show Carol, Carol you know where the camera is. Right. <laughs> so we start doing the thing. My brain is filled with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is going to get to Saul. So my brain is filled with this stuff. And then um, I start three jokes in, they start laughing. <laughs> I'm hooked. Yes, that's right? the elixir. I am hooked. <laughs> oh, they think I'm funny. Oh. And it's one of those moments where I didn't push it, but I was aware that actually I had done my homework. Mm -hmm. I had made some choices. Mm -hmm. The choices were lining up what they were liking. Right. And I finished that audition. Yeah. <laughs> They're sitting the up. They stood up to shake my hand. Carol gives me a wink. She gives me a wink. I walk out the door. <laughs> the walls are thin. All the guys are there like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so then I get in the car and I call my manager and I and I said Did you say I think I booked yes! it? Yes. Ah! I said I said, look, I think you can put a pin in me on this one. I said, I did really, really great. I set the bar. I mean I went through all that stuff. I never do that. I never jinx myself like that. <laughs> By five o'clock, sure enough, they call back, they put a pin in me. And I was like, well, there you go. You know what? Here, guess what? Turn this car around. My kids can watch this show. It's going to be really fun. It pays American money. I'll right. pay my mortgage. You know what? Maybe I'll become a recurring. I start driving down that wow. path. I'll be selling on my ABC family for the next five years. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Who wants a gig? I do. Oh, my God. Don't hear anything for like three or four days. I'm 24-7 waiting for the call to say like, yes, we're pushing the pin in and you have a, you have a job. I finally call my manager. I'm like, hey, hey, well, um, um, did uh, did ABC Family not remember or something? And he, of course, has completely forgotten about it. He goes, oh, oh, yeah, I'll call. He calls back two minutes later, and he just says, with, with you know, it's a business. He calls back, and he goes, oh, um, actually, uh, they, they they meant to unpin you. They they uh, made an offer to a name of your name. Oh, don't worry, we'll find something else. Click. <laughs> now you're in a puddle. <laughs> you're in a puddle in a, the a, living a, room. A, a name of your name. And then I was like, for dog with a blog? <laughs> and that's no offense to dog with a blog, and I mean that sincerely. <laughs> but it's my sense of like, there was 20 other guys in the room, and I just felt bad for all of us collectively, because we all have resumes that are 10, 20 right. years long. Right. <clears throat> all of us were not worthy enough. They auditioned all of us. We all had the Carol Goldwasser experience. Right. And none of us got the job, because they just went ahead and offered it to somebody, yeah. which is the business. Right. Oh. Two weeks later, I get a call. Um, I have an audition for Better Call Saul with Sherry Thomas and Sharon Bialy's office. I know that it's the prequel to, to Breaking Bad, but of you course, do. as I said, I hadn't seen Breaking Bad. <clears throat> right. So, so I go, well, if they're, if they're offering a name of your name for a guest spot on uh, Dog with a Blog, they're going to get a movie star for Breaking Bad's sequel. I mean, that's, that's a done deal. But I haven't seen <clears throat> Bialy Thomas probably in about four or five years, and they cast The Walking Dead, and that's in its third season. Oh, wow, you're really tracking. You know what? You know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna go in there and audition for this uh, this Better Call Whatever thing, and uh, they're gonna give me like a three episode arc on The Walking Dead, and I'm gonna get eaten by a zombie. That's my goal. <laughs> I love how you plan it all out. Well, that was my deal because I was like, well, no, this is the other thing. So I go in and I see Sherry Thomas. It's Sherry Thomas and, 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 and just the camera. And she sits down and we chat for a little bit. It's nice. I haven't seen them in a while. So it was good to say hello. Always good to, you know, yep. always good to say hello Press to your the casting flesh. directors and be nice. Right. And, you know, also know when to stop chatting. Right. <laughs> Clearly, that's a bit of an issue for uh, me. He's a chatty guy. <laughs> so uh, she says to me, I love telling this story. She says to me, okay, let's do this. Um... <clears throat> Uh, they like to keep it real. I have to back up one bit. So I get the sides for Better Call Saul. It's three pages. There's no script. And there's a two-line character description. Oh, no script? Oh, no, no script, script, but you have sides. Yeah. Okay. The, the sides, uh, I, I have sides, and it's just basically a lawyer, a, a, a lawyer who's blonde and blah, blah, blah. And I remember going to my wife and going, 
I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> how am I supposed to make any choices? This is like giving me a dart and putting me on a merry-go-round with right. the target 50 yards away. Right. And so I'm like, Wah! and she <laughs> says, well, isn't that great? You can make whatever choices you want then. And I was like, I, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> So I find myself in Sherry Thomas's place, and then she sits down. I've got the three pages of sides that I've memorized uh, because you should always go in cold. You yep. should always go in cold on your lines and hold your script in hand. Yep. It separates. Yes. It separates. It separates. It makes you know that you know what you're talking about. Right. Huge difference. Just do it. It's part of your job. Yep. I believe that strongly. Don't be lazy. Um, boy, now I sound like a dad. Sorry. No, I say it all the time, Patrick. You know, you come in for a self-tape, and the excuse is, I just got it. I, I was working. Da, 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 da. No excuses. Yeah. You want the job or not? I know. Yeah, yeah. Stack the deck in your favor, because somebody else is out there doing no, push-ups. I know. Um, so I'm there with <laughs> Sherry Thomas, and, uh, and she says, they like it, they like it real. They like, like it natural. Got that note. I can hear that. She said, they like it real. That's good. Great. Here we go. <laughs> Got to go get myself a zombie thing. I proceed to project uh, through Sherry's face. <laughs> through the lens, through the back of the camera, through the back of the wall. I'm doing Shakespeare in a stadium Schmack-dane. somewhere. I cannot stop myself. I am now outside of myself saying, you're yelling, you're yelling, but I can't stop. I, I can't have the wherewithal to just stop and say, can we start again? None of it. It's just the train is off the tracks. I finish it. I can feel the sweat in the back of my neck, and Sherry looks at me, and she goes, okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's do it again. And she repeats exactly what she said. And somewhere in my reptilian <laughs> actor brain, I'm like, she's repeating what she already said, which means you did not take the note. Mm -hmm. Which goes to also, I think, when they give you an adjustment in a room, we're not putting on the play. We're not doing the finished product. They are looking to see if you can take direction because if they get you on set mm -hmm. and you can't take direction, it does not help the project. The ability to discard what your choices are, suck in somebody else's and make them as real as possible on the fly is a skill set and I believe that strongly. So somewhere in my brain I'm like, do it. And then I was sort of caught in my head. I'm like, oh, I'm, oh, oh, my zombie eating is going down. It's going down the drain, Judy. I'm not going to be on Walking Dead. So I just go, ah. And we do the scene. And I do it with talking and listening. And I do it in my own voice without putting anything on it. And we finish and we have some nice exchanges. And, and I leave the room and on the drive home. I'm not even doing it to the steering wheel. But I convince myself that maybe I showed her I could do left and right enough that I, that I corrected myself enough mm -hmm. that she'll have me back for something. That'd be cool. All right. <laughs> Three weeks later, I get a call. Three that weeks? Sony, uh, that they get a call and they say, Vince Gilligan saw your tape and they want to test you. And I was like, really? My manager was like, yeah, really? And I'm like, well, maybe we both shouldn't be surprised. Um, <laughs> maybe we and both. literally from that, from seeing Sherry Thomas and having her graciously give me a second whack at it I find myself testing for it which is a room now with people from AMC right. both Sherry and, and Sharon are there um, people from Sony are there Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould are there so I go in same three pages by the way nothing has changed no other information has been given so you go in when you do these things you go and you sign contracts for seven years right. with money and it's all absurd and means nothing and it gets you nervous and it's in your head but you have to do it beforehand right and so you do it beforehand, and Michael Mando, who plays Nacho Varga on the show, he was there. So at least it was him and me, and we were like, well. Oh, you were reading with him? You, no, no, we were, we were both testing at oh, the same testing. time. Oh, testing, okay. So I was like, well, we're clearly not reading with the same part, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that was, that was kind of relieving. And then I went in, and um, sorry I've been making this too long. No, I go in, and, and Peter Gould and, and Vince Gilligan are standing on my acting space. There's a chair there. Uh -huh. And I walk in, and they're just like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, hi. And my whole mantra to myself, you know, being prepared, stacking the deck in your favor. As you can see, I get chatty. I don't want to get chatty. I want to come and show my work. I want to show my work. I want to be the answer. I want to do just, 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 just let me do that. I've already chatted myself out. Please don't. And they are standing there. And they and want they to start chat. engaging in like, so how'd you, where do you live? I'm like, oh no, we're not doing that. And all of a sudden I can feel, and now I'm telling cocktail stories about the 405. You ever go golfing over here? Blah, 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 blah. I got kids, do you have kids? And I'm doing Shecky Green stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm just ruining this. And then all of a sudden they go, oh, okay. Well, um, here, this is yours. We're just gonna go over here and, and photograph it. Now I'm standing at my acting space. Now I've got my chair and now I'm, it's a small little theater basically. And there's like 20 people and I'm like, it's like okay. a screening room, it's right? It's a screening yeah. room, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And um, just before going, Vince says, he goes, oh, by the way, we liked what we saw. I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel. We just want to see it right now. And I thought, listen to what you're being told. Mm -hmm. Don't. Gild the lily. <laughs> right. So I do it. And I think as soon as I do it, I'm like, oh, that wasn't enough. I didn't do it enough. And uh, Vince goes, uh, I like this bit. Um, this is good, too. Keep that the same. And this pass on this line and this area, how about you think about, and he gives a suggestion. Not a line reading, but a mm -hmm. suggestion. But again, my reptilian brain says, it may not make sense, because I, I don't have time enough right now to uh, make the components of this three-page scene uh, make sense. Make this part, make it whatever he suggested, right. even if it doesn't couple with the way I came in and the way I came out. It's exactly how I looked at it. I looked at it as a puzzle, right. and he told me to flip this puzzle piece and keep these puzzle pieces the same. So, right. so then I do it again. And he goes, well, great. I think that's the one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send to AMC. And he goes, do you want to do anything else? And at that moment, of course, your ego. And you're like, oh, let me show you what I really have to do. And instead I said, um, are you still the, the, the one who's in charge? And he, and he goes, oh, I, I think so. And I said, then I'm good. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> and then 10 days later, I get a phone call and I book the job. Wow. And, you know, wow, that's a long story. But here's the, here's, here's the whole point of it. The point of it is in the three weeks between not getting the job on Dog with a Blog and getting the job on Better Call Saul, I didn't become a better actor. I didn't become all of a sudden super artistic. I was the answer. I was the answer when I went in. And when I went in, I actually fit all the things that they were imagining when they thought what Howard Hamlin mm. might be like. And whatever talent I brought to bear was cumulative. Right. Whatever audition technique I had was cumulative. Um, and and I, when I say I was lucky, I was lucky.